Today I'm going to talk about how to choose between a single, a double, and a triple mountaineering boot for your next adventure. How do you choose between a single, a double, and a triple mountaineering boot for your next adventure? That's what I'm going to talk about today. Hi, my name is Aaron Linstow. I'm a polar explorer and professional adventurer. Before I get into that, if you wouldn't mind, please leaving a comment, let me know how I'm doing, and also please subscribe to the channel to support it. Thank you very much. So let's get right into this. How do you choose between this single, double, and a triple mountaineering boot? In fact, what does single, double, and triple mountaineering even mean? Wow, that's why you're watching this video. So depending on how cold it's going to be on the mountain or the location you're going to go, and how high you're going to go, determines the type of boot that you need to wear. These boots are the La Sportiva Nepal Cube GTX boots. They are a single boot, I'll show you that in a minute. The double boots, my La Sportiva Baruncés, and then my triple boots are the Malay Everest GTX, I think is the name. So these boots, in my experience, once you get down to about zero degrees, are going to be kind of chilly. It's not going to be that great. So these are definitely good for cascade range volcanoes, uh, rainier in the summer, um, Mount Hood, pretty much all year, Gannett, easy, no problem. Mount Washington in most of the year, ex except for winter, yeah, you don't want to do that. Uh, you'd be amazed how much you could do with a single boot. But at zero degrees, shoot, that's probably going to be the cutoff. These double mountaineering boots, I've just stood around minus 18, minus 20, and been perfectly warm and comfortable in them. On Mount Elbrus, the tallest mountain in Europe and Russia, when I was sitting outside, it was dark, windy. I got chilly, but it was well below minus 20. I mean, everybody was mega bundled up, and we're, we're sitting there for a long while waiting to get to where we needed to be. These boots, the triple mountaineering boots, these are hardcore. I think Denali, Everest, Choi Oyu, Annapurna, something like that, really hardcore. So... How to choose between these boots? Well, let's get into the different weights, right? So each of these boots has a different weight. And uh, let, let me toss these down here so it's not such a mess. All right. A little bit easier to understand this. Now I'm going to weigh each of the different boots just to give you an idea. This boot here, the cube, weighs uh, 1,088 grams or 2 pounds 6 ounces. The Baruncés weigh three pounds, seven ounces, a full pound heavier than the cubes, and in grams speak, 1,582 grams. The Malays, interestingly enough, weigh three pounds and eight ounces, or 1,584 grams. Pretty interesting that these boots are within an ounce or a few grams of each other. Kind of surprising. Uh, just some dimensions of these boots, just to give you an idea. This is a size 46. I never remember what size this is. 47, I think. And this is a 47 and a half. The boots measure uh, 12 and a half inches on the sole. This is roughly... 13 and a half on the sole, and this is almost 14 inches. So definitely a big difference there. The boot to the top of the rim of the uh, leg hole is 10 inches here. To the top is 11, and on the boot part is about 11 and a half, give or take. But the gaiter adds... <laughs> all the way up to about 20 inches, so substantially different here. So what's the difference between single, double, and triple? A single boot is your classic boot that you would buy anywhere. You, you, nothing to it, I mean, there's a lot to this. This is a really expensive boot. You put your foot in and that's it. It's, it has insulation, it's got lots of padding and nice warmth for your legs and feet. 
And the idea is it keeps your feet pretty warm, but once you hit zero degrees, it's going to be kind of chilly. A double boot, on the other hand, actually has, let's see if I can get it out here. I need to untie this lace because it's a bit of a process, and I'll show you this. A double boot, come on, actually has a boot inside of the boot. Kind of weird, huh? This inner liner is where most of your insulation is in your double boot. It's got this EVA, Aerotech, whatever foam that thermally molds to your foot. Uh, one thing, the instructions on La Sportiva site say you can put this in your oven, warm it up, and then form it to your foot. You don't actually need to do that. All you have to do is put your foot in there and just march around all day in your house. It'll mold eventually. So you can see that this liner, which can be taken out to dry in your sleeping bag, putting this boot in your sleeping bag is misery to say the least. Putting this liner in there, it's not comfortable, but it works. And then this is just a super heavy duty shell that adds a whole other layer of insulation and protection for your foot. So definitely a step up. I've used these, um, again, minus 20, no problem. Elbrus a little chilly, but we're sitting around for a long time in the freezing cold wind. Now a triple boot, yeah, is a whole other deal instead. This boot is like the double boot with a gaiter and some additional thermal lining as well. So let me get this unzipped. This literally is part of the boot. It's pretty crazy. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Just to get into the boot is a major operation, as you can see here. That's Malay Everest. So as you can see here inside, it's got this silver foil to reflect the heat back to you. The gator doesn't have insulation, which apparently not a big deal because this boot's rated to minus 76 degrees or minus, 60, or minus 76 Fahrenheit, uh, minus 60 C. So it's pretty crazy. So you've got this extra outer liner, which is insulated. It has foam. And then it has the same concept but a much beefier design than my regular double boot here. It also has foil on the inside. Check out my review of this boot. And then it has an even, uh, if I can get it out, beefier liner <laughs> that looks like it's its own boot. And this thing is not cheap either. So this triple boot has the liner plus the shell plus a, an insulated gator to keep your feet warm in the craziest locations. Mount Vincent, Antarctica, Annapurna, Everest, all that. This is one of the three boots that you will see on those mountains. Double boots, you will see all sorts of variations all around the world, and single boots as well. So lots of different choices here. Now, let's say, hey, I've got to choose one. I might as well just go for the warmest boot possible, right? No, definitely not, because one, unless you're made of money, you might be made of money, don't want to make a judgment, these are expensive, like mind-blowingly expensive. These two boots, uh, th this is maybe 100, 200 bucks more expensive than the Cubes or the Evos. Uh, th this is, if you get it on sales, reasonably priced. If you're just getting into mountaineering, I gotta tell you, you're gonna cry about the price. That's just the way it is. Also, you're going to want to make sure not only to choose your different boot, but you also need to get crampons, which are the devices that you put on your feet so you can scale the ice and snow. So you don't just get a mountaineering boot, but you have to put, get crampons. And let's see if I can get this on here without putting a hole in my hand on my YouTube channel, because that would be awesome. And then uh, this clips on here. Hopefully, ka-chunk, yeah, there you go. So not only do you have to choose your mountaineering boot, but you may need to make sure to get crampons that are compatible with your boot because each one of these boots has a toe welt that is an important piece of the attachment to your crampon and a heel welt as well that attaches to the, ah, stabbed myself already the back of the crampon. So all three mountaineering boots have that. All three mountaineering boots are not flexible at all. 
<clears throat> this has carbon fiber in the shank. It runs all the way through. This is a crazy stiff and light boot. It's expensive as a consequence. So the mountaineering boot is a choice when you need to do crampon travel on glaciers or ice climbing or anything like that. Your regular hiker boot that's flexible, forget it. So the choice between these three boots is say, Rainier in the summer, uh, any one of the other Cascade volcanoes most of the year, uh, Mount Washington, if it's snowy but it's not winter, this boot will take you to a double boot, will take you to a six or 7,000 meter peak without too much heartache. On Denali, this boot uh, may require a overboot, like a 40 below overboot to keep you warm. The triple boot is pretty much the ultimate answer. That's what I used on Denali, uh, Everest, anywhere else. This is the boot to go with. So hopefully this has helped you make a decision between the single, the double, and the triple boot. It really depends on where you're going. And as you can see here, I do own all three of these. I have paid my own hard-earned money for them, so I'm not getting these for free just to show you. And uh, it, it's, it's a challenge and it's expensive, but I would never wear my cubes on Denali. I've seen people up there freezing their feet off. And I would certainly never wear my triple boots on climbing Mount Hood or Baker or Adams or Shasta or anything else. So each one of these has their place just like every other tool in your toolkit. My name is Aaron Linsdow. I'm a polar explorer and professional adventurer. Please like and comment on this video and subscribe to my channel to support it. And also please support me on Venmo, PayPal, and Patreon. Get out there and adventure.